here we have a typical dining table with six chairs. There's actually eight, but there's quite a few of them in need of repair. So I'm going to hopefully do some repairs to these and we can get the full commission of eight chairs working again. Just as a thought, does anybody know the collective term for chairs? I'll be disclosing that later in the video. Anyway, we'll get cracking. The first thing I've done is to place a towel on the table and then we'll flip the chairs and inspect each one in turn. So with the chair flipped like you would do back in the school days, you know, to facilitate a thorough cleaning job. At the end of the school day, everybody used to put the chairs on the desk. There's a tiny bit of play in this leg, but not much. So we'll open this up and uh, see if we can improve further. So we've got some uh, hex bolts there. An Allen key will suffice for tightening up, but uh, I have a strong preference for my, my hex drive set and a ratchet. It's important not to go too far. Bear in mind wood expands and contracts a little with the temperature. I can put a lot of force on with this tool and probably damage something. I'm just going to go very carefully and go through the full chair as we tighten one, the other one loosens. I kind of know where to stop. and It's in a lot of force with this equipment. I have a more major repair to do on one of the legs which I'll get to in a moment. So we'll just go through these chairs one by one. Just applying a little bit more force as we go. Keep everything nice and taut. It's quite loose that one, isn't it? So we check each chair in turn and uh, hopefully we'll get to the tricky one soon. So this chair is now nice and solid. So I'll reinstate the cover and I'll set one down, seven to go. Well, I'm about four chairs in and I just came to this chair with an incredibly loose leg. And uh, I've pre-loosened this, but they were incredibly loose. You see that's moving up and down with every rotation. So I'm gonna to totally remove this and have a look at the damage. So I don't think this is gonna be good news. It looks like I've previously repaired this with uh, wood glue, and in fairness, the glue has held. But um, it's found another place to give up, which is disappointing. So I think we're going to have to re glue that and hope for the best. So, the first thing I need to do is straighten this bolt out. If I just nip it up in the vise, I will just damage the threads, it'll just crush that. So I'm going to try something, short of finding some nuts for this, because um, I appreciate not everybody will have access to that, maybe not even have a bolt. So I've now got the bolt nipped up, we can see where the bend is there, um, hopefully the microfiber cloth will protect it, don't have to be microfiber, I'll just use anything, and I'll just apply a bit of leverage, just gently, via the mole grips and we'll just check it for straight. Definitely straighter. Um, we're not going to get this perfectly back in line, but it, it's close enough for me. So the next stage, in the absence of any you know, wooden vise, uh, if I crimp the wood up with this vise, it'll just put lines in it. So I'm going to use a tea towel, um, double folded. Could use bits of wood, but I'd have to find some of them. I'm hoping this will do it. Well, I've decided the best thing to do would be to use some uh, wood glue. Put that in before attempting to straighten things out and improve it. And then the glue is maximised. And we'll see how that goes. This is some wood glue I've had quite a long time. So all the tops are all glued up. So I'm going to use the 
matchstick. You can use a cocktail stick, but unfortunately, couldn't lay my hands on any of them and work it in the wood. Do a really even job. I'm going to keep doing that off Spend camera. Quite a bit of time with a matchstick, working it in, working the glue in. I'll try and maximise the surface coverage with a view to making a stronger repair. But there's quite a few issues with this. I'm not sure if gluing it will be the total solution. So we've cramped it up in the vise and uh, I'm going to have to tap this down very gingerly with a mallet. The only mallet I've got is a rubber mallet. So after a few taps and a bit of, bit of squeezing and I even fed the match stick in here. So there's a section of wood missing. We've got it something like in shape, so now it's just a game of patience as we wait for the glue to cure. Well, on the very next chair I uh, checked out, I came across another wood splitting scenario. So we'll have a go at repairing this one in the same way without using the vise, because I figure there's a lot of you who will not have access to a vise. So we'll look at some alternative methods for that. Well, we spent quite a bit of time working the glue into every crevice available and a couple of options come to mind G clamp or C clamp that would be a C clamp actually on account of the shape or uh, these are used for welding to weld the work so that they're a possibility we'll see which one I end up using so we've ended up using the C clamp um, it was pretty simple to do, didn't have any issues. A little bit fiddlier than the vice. Okay, I'm now six chairs in, and I've noticed here that's moved to the right on both of them, so I'm going to try and tap them in. I don't want them making a break for freedom. And it's the same story at the bottom in the case of the central one. These three should be equispaced for comfort. Okay, so that's the, the springing knocked back in place. I'll put a couple of zip ties on just to keep it in check, but I'm not, gonna sh not sure if it's going to work. I think there's some kind of hot glue there which I need to deal with. I think that's what the manufacturers were relying on. Well, I've put the three-legged chairs out of harm's way to the right, and the next specimen we've got, which was in a different room, um, the spring has failed here. It's uh, made a break for freedom, unfortunately. You can see, see the power of the spring. The rip base really serves as a testimony to that. Okay, I've got some mole grips. But I haven't gripped the top of that, I've gripped the one below. So, I've got to actually stretch the spring slightly. So I'm using all my body weight against the chair. And we're just going to hook that on. Now, I'm not totally satisfied enough to leave that. I think we'll get some zip ties on it. And hope for the best. So we struggled a little bit to work a zip tie around because of the corner. <laughs> I'll just cut the tail off. Well, I'm not happy at that. The zip tie, I don't think will hold it. So I'm going to use some adhesive here. I've got some JB Weld. Probably a little bit overkill. If I'd have had any two-part epoxy, I would have used that, but... I seem to be a bit low on things like that. At this moment in time, I'll have to go to the shop and buy some. So I've got equal quantities of each. I'm just going to thoroughly mix them. This stuff is absolutely overkill for this, but that's all I've got at the minute to work with. It will do an excellent job, though. So I've just tapped this spring back slightly with a hammer. So I can work some of this in. And then I'll re-tap it. And that should be the last of this happening. 
wherever I can apply it, I will. I'll also do these here, the other ones. And now chair number eight, where we've had another detrimental spring failure. Again, doing damage. It's very thin material, that. So we'll see what we can achieve. It's like we're going to have to go relocate both ends. If you're actually after a video where there are a load of antique furniture getting restored, I'm afraid you're out of luck. We've just got modern tat to offer here. Well, I'm now facing a repair dilemma. Uh, the problem is I've got to weave this in here and it's at, currently at right angles. I can get that in, but then obviously I've got the other side. Um, I think I'll work this one in reverse to save cutting that and we'll see if we can wiggle this one in as that's about 45 degrees so I've got more chance of sliding that one in. Well that went better than expected. Um, I'm going to get another mix of JB weld and put a blob on each one just to ensure that a tragedy like this should never happen again. So we'll get back to the two chairs that we've glued the legs on. Well, the gluing session's been a, a roaring success. This particular one's um, more damaged due to it being repaired twice. So we'll give it one more gluing and see how it reacts. More of a success on this one. This was merely a stitch in time. This is the one we did with a G clamp. That's slightly raised, but nothing ever goes back as you'd expect. So we'll get these legs on. So with, the, with the, both the legs screwed on, we now have a full complement of eight chairs, which hopefully can be put to some use at some future date. Um, beginning of the video, I did mention what is the collective term for a group of chairs. The collective term is a fold, which was interesting to know because none of these chairs actually do fold. But uh, thanks for watching, and why not subscribe to view more various repair videos as they come to me.